All right, here we are with a brand new episode of the Right Here podcast. It has been a couple weeks, and uh, me and Tyler are back off of hiatus. And uh, our guest is a huge name in wrestling, Yanni Diakamahalis. He's a four-time New York State champ for the 20, no, 243-3 and three record, 210-match win streak, two gold medals in freestyle and cadet level, right, Jan? Yep. A 2019 U.S. Open champ, two-time national champ for Cornell, and the first ever Ivy Leaguer to be named Rookie and Wrestler of the Year and 2019 EIWA Wrestler of the Year. So many accomplishments, so many accolades. This is a top name in wrestling today, and I am happy to have Yanni on the show. How's it going, Jan? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, just kinda trying to make it work with everything that's going on right now, actually. Right you are uh, gonna have to either uh, get closer or just speak yeah, a bit. Yeah. Up. yeah, it's just um, you know, trying to do whatever I can with all the stuff going on right now. You know, it's tough to, it's tough to just kind of live your normal life, but you got to do your best. Yeah. So, uh, uh, how has COVID uh, affected you and like your wrestling lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've definitely had to get creative. You know, two things. So the Freeman Center is under construction. So even if we were allowed on campus we wouldn't even be able to get into Freeman because they're you know they're they're renovating it right now so we've had to you know talk to local wrestling club people you know as far as maybe an hour away you know well we set up like a I guess like a half weight room just like a bench and a squat rack you know <laughs> in someone's backyard and we just kind of had to get creative and make it work however we can and I get that that's what everyone's doing right now so you're not really in a like I'm not really in a position to complain. It's just kind of how things are right now. Yeah, in in somebody's backyard. Yeah, so there's a handful of guys who live um like two miles from me, and there's a it's like a series of apartments, and the coach is like the coach Cole. Well, the RTC is the landlord. It's owned by our wrestling club. Yeah. So they were like, all right, we're gonna set up. You know, they have a little tent set up with like a just a bench and some weights and stuff. So. It, you know, I mean, we, we make it work however we can, and it's just cool that everyone's kind of doing their part, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where are you at now? Uh, back home in Rochester or at Cornell? Right now I'm in Ithaca. You know, I yeah. was uh, I was in Rochester for a couple weeks, you know, right when everything started. Everyone had to leave. I, I went home for a little bit. And just kinda, you know, it was just easier when, there, you know, you weren't allowed to do anything. I could just go at home and wrestle in my garage with my brothers, and that made it. You know, at least I had a guaranteed wrestling room. And then once things got a little bit more relaxed, you know, I could come back and wrestle with, you know, some more single level and college guys. Yeah. How is the uh, family doing uh, back in Rochester? They're good. Um, Greg's living in Ithaca now, so he's getting settled in, kind of learning how to do things on his own. And Yeah, so uh, uh, Greg is a freshman now at uh, so Cornell, taking, right? He's taking the gap year, so he's going to be okay. – we're, well, I guess we're the sparring RTC now, but he's a frog. He's a thing like this guy. He's a red shirt. And, uh, he, you know, he's taking the year. He's, he's small, you know, so he's got to lift a lot, get bigger. And yeah. He's, what's he's he weigh? Like, you know, yeah. so, <laughs> <laughs> he's got to take some time, you know, to, just to adjust to living on his own college wrestling and just yeah. like, get his, get his weight up a little bit. Yeah. For sure. Like, Is he going to live with you or are you, you don't no. want to, we kind of have, I mean, we would definitely fight, but that's kind of how it is. Fight <laughs> over what? Just every, I don't know. We just get on, there's, you guys probably know how it is. Just, just getting on each other. But, uh, yeah. what, so what, and I'm glad he did this. So he could have lived with me, but a lot of times what we try to do is we get the guys who are like whatever the high school graduating class it is. And we try and keep them in those apartments that the RTC owns so that they get to know each other a little bit. Because, you know, I mean, he can live with me, but then he never really gets to spend time with those guys. You know, he doesn't have a car. So unless he, someone's just going to drive him around all day, you know, he's not going to really build that good bond with those guys outside of practice. So I think at least for his first year, it's good that he gets to know those guys that he's going to, in the end, he's going to graduate with. And then, you know, he can decide after a year of that, you know, if he wants to keep, keep staying with them and, keep, you know, go with them or if he's cool with my friends, you know. But it's good that he gets to make his own decision. Yeah, and, you know, I was uh, also thinking down the road to uh, uh, have him as a uh, future guest on the podcast, uh, maybe after his first national title, so. 
Hopefully it's sooner than later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's hope he does. Yeah. So, uh, you know, let's uh, talk about uh, wrestling, you know, in your youth. Uh, how did you start wrestling? So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my dad was really into it. You know, he uh, he was not standout, but I think he really appreciated, you know, the values you get. You know, I think it helped. It made him tough. You know, I mean, he had a lot of discipline. He cut a lot of weight. So, I think he wanted for me and my brothers just kind of to be tough and disciplined kids, you know. And, he, and the best way that he knew without just – holding us all the time was having us wrestle you know i mean it was it was a sport that kind of anyone can be good at you know you don't need to be big you don't need to be tall you don't need to be super strong or fast you know i mean you can make it work so that was kind of what we did and then you know we got more and more serious and then eventually we started moving into my garage my dad was like all right i'm gonna go with you we started doing the youtube training where you would watch a match on youtube and you know it might be the 19 it might be the 2008 World Final or the yeah. you know, 94 World Championships or whatever. <laughs> you just find matches, watch them, and you kind of look for what the best guys are doing, and you work on it. And that was kind of what we did for a while. And, you know, I think that's one thing that makes mine and my brother's wrestling development really unique is that a lot of times the better guys – I mean, not even better guys. Most guys, you know, come from a club and they have a coach who – might have been an NCAA champ or he was an All-American or he, you know, wrestled it in one somewhere. Or, you know, at, at the least, you know, it's someone who has been around for a while and has a well-developed club. But we kind of took it upon ourselves to just make it work. And I think that it's one of those things that, you know, probably doesn't work for everybody, but we luckily did it right. Yeah. yeah. So. What's your uh, favorite match, like, uh, to – go back and like watch on a uh, video, like uh, for example, like a old match like that uh, makes you be like, hey, that was a classic. Yeah, really, really fun match to watch. So there's two that in the top of the head. One of them, it was at the World Cup in 2015. It was Mohamedi from Iran and Esgarov from Azerbaijan there at 65 kilos, which is part of it is I'm biased because it's my weight. So I watch a lot more of that, but yeah. A got an absolute dog fight. It was back when the rules were a little bit different, you know, they had the mm -hmm. hand to hand being one point instead of just a regular turn, but they just like few points up on the board, they're hitting all sorts of crazy stuff. You know what I mean? Mohammedi's classic Iranian, like underhook push, drive it to the edge. And as Barov was really tall and really sneaky, you know what I mean? He would hit these overhook shrugs and power high shrugs. So it was a really good style matchup. And then another really good one is, Frank Chimizo's first world title. He wrestles this guy from Uzbekistan who, who it was his, I think it was his first medal, but you know, it was both of their first times wrestling. I mean, it was Chimizo's second medal, but his first time wrestling for Italy. And they get in this crazy match, like oh, tons of crazy scrambles. Chimizo almost takes him down a bunch of times. And then he gets one late, late, like I don't know, five seconds after the match. And those two were really exciting. Ones that I like to watch. Yeah. How did you think of uh, Frank versus your uh, boy, Kyle Dake? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's an interesting matchup because they're both so good defensively that the other, yes. the other was kind of cautious to take really a hard committed attack. And then what made the difference was Kyle's gut wrench. You know, I feel like if you asked any of the Cornell guys, they tell you he's a, he has the best gut wrench you've ever felt or seen. I have, I have also uh, heard that rumor. Yeah, his gut wrench is phenomenal. I mean, I couldn't even – I've never seen anyone defend his gut. Maybe one person ever. Like, I, I don't know. He's got a really good gut wrench, so I think that. And that's I, part of the reason he's so dangerous. It's like you can't shoot on him because he's going to take you down. You don't want to just give up free takedowns because he's going to gut you. So it makes it really hard to approach the match. You know I mean? It's hard to attack because if you leave any openings, it leads to big points for him. Yeah. It's a big game changer. Yeah. And uh, I just think uh, Dake holds, you know, the – well, like his stance just so well. Like he's so uh, low, uh, and he's and he just, like, holds that, like, uh, tackle stance, and he's just so tough to uh, score on. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of his whole game now is it's like you touch his legs if you want, you're going to get <laughs> slammed on your head. So, And because of that, it opens up a lot of offense for him. You know, I mean, the guy is – the guys he's wrestling have to be more cautious about what they're doing, which gives him more opportunity to get on his offense. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a good, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. So Yanni, the uh, big question, I'm going to put you on the spot early. Who wins next year? Burroughs or Dake? I mean, I 
think <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I mean, Kyle's gotten so much better. You know, I mean, I think he's completely different from he was the last time him and Burroughs wrestled. And I think, you know, I mean, I just he's really good. And you know, at the same time, like Jordan is super tough. And you know, he's he's good at finding ways to win matches, even when he seems like he's out of them. I mean, obviously, you know, I train with Kyle and he's my train partner and he's done so much for me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for him and obviously I want the best for him and Jordan's like a great guy too, but I just like, I don't know. I think it's gonna be a really good match. And I think, yeah, you know, it's just going to be a matter of, you know, tiny little things like maybe Kyle turns, if Kyle turns him, you know, I mean, that's a huge game changer. Yeah. But I mean, he's, he's, if he stops the double, there's just a lot of ifs. And I think that, you know, Kyle is much, much better than he was last time they wrestled. Yeah. So, uh, really, uh, how did Kyle, uh, help you and like, uh, your technique or like maybe mindset, you know, in the sport of wrestling, like how has he helped you with just be better? Well, I mean, I think it's two things on one end. It's a guy who will always beat me. You know what I mean? It's someone who I can always be chasing and working towards beating. And it's, yeah. it's a way to never let yourself really get content in the room. Cause it's like, yeah, you might be smashing all the college guys, but like Kyle still turns you upside down and puts my head in the garbage can. <laughs> in the uh, garbage can <laughs> and then uh on the other end it's he, he it's one of those things that you probably wouldn't notice if you weren't paying attention to it but he lives his life so um everything every detail he controls you know what i mean he's very particular about what he eats what how he sleeps you know when he's sleeping mm-hmm. he's he grows his own vegetables so that they can be like he controls Does he? what's in them yeah and wow. i mean he's very particular about everything he does and I can see how some people might think like, oh, you're worrying about too many things that don't matter. But if you take a bunch of 0.1% things and keep working on them, you know, they add up. So I think for me, it's just, you know, it's like you might think you're doing the right things, but there's always, you could be better. You know I mean? Like you want to be so good. Like you want to be just as good as Kyle or you want to be better. Like you got to be doing at least what he's doing. You know what I mean? You got to be living that way. So I think that was eye opening for me. You know what I mean? Because I always was really aware of, what good wrestling looked like. And I understood like you had to be strong, you had to be fast, you had to be in good shape. If you wanted to be, you know, the best of the best. But there were so many other things that I think, you know, obviously everyone knows them, but you don't realize to what level of detail, you know, the best guys take them to. And I don't know if that's how everyone is. I don't know if it's just Kyle, but you know, he's the best guy who I've ever had as much exposure to as I've had. And he lives his life so perfectly and attentively that you can't help but think that that's part of the correlation. Yeah. He seems very connected to like the earth with like his tweets, like <laughs> don't wear shoes. Very into this. I don't know what you call it. It's like for lack of a better word, kind of like alternate science. You know I mean? He listens to, he'll, he does his research. He digs really deep and he finds out, you know, these things about how, like the benefits of grounding for 30 minutes a day or like how sunlight affects your skin and yeah. you know what type of foods you should eat like he's really big on you know not eating gluten eating seasonally you know what i mean so because all that stuff and again it's like well what's the big deal that it's like well you don't eat gluten and it's healthier it helps you keep your weight down and gluten's a big like swelling agent you know what i mean to keep you from getting hurt and like the seasonal vegetables it's like you're getting less you know poisons and toxins and pesticides in your food because it's what's naturally grown. You know, I mean, these are the kind of things that like regular people just don't think about. I don't think about them. You know I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think to Google, you know, what fruits and vegetables are naturally grown in Ithaca in July. You know what I mean? But those are the kind of things that, you know, I'm not saying everyone does that, but if you want to be as extremely invested as Kyle is, those are the kind of things that he does. You know what I mean? Uh, he, have you ever done like those functional pattern lifts that like he does? Yeah, it's 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 different. I mean, like you do use weight. It's not like you just don't pick up weights, but it's more about. I feel like it's hard to explain, but the best way yeah, I can describe it, you'd have to like watch videos on like what they do. Yeah. It's pretty. Yeah. So essentially, this guy Naudi, who is kind of like the creator of it, figured out at least for the most part these certain ways that your body is meant to move where if you could strengthen your body to move this way, it would keep you from getting hurt and in theory, make you stronger relative to your own strength. So maybe you wouldn't actually, I mean, you could get stronger, you could gain muscle, but on the same time, it's like you learn to optimize your muscle kind of. And even on like a broader scale for just like regular people, I think the point of it is, you know, 
they fix your posture and they fix the way you walk and the way, you know, your feet move and all of these things. And it's supposed to promote health, I guess, you know I mean? And I'm not doing a great job describing it to you guys, but it's very um, from traditional strength training. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very different and it's hard to, it's hard to describe without seeing it or doing it. And, you know, there's definitely some really good benefits from it. I mean, if you watch Kyle, you can see he's a totally different guy than he used to be. And, you know, I, he, he would credit a lot of that to FP. So I think, you know, it has done a really a ton for him. And I get that, you know, not everyone's going to train that way, but it's an interesting type of alternate training that he does exclusively. Never lifts. He hasn't lifted in like three or four years, I think. Yeah, man, that's um, that's a pretty wild, like, that he uh, hasn't, uh, like, uh, strength so, training. I mean, like, yeah, time. like, no traditional, like, like a barbell bench. I mean, probably yeah, not. or like squats or a deadlift, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, change gears here, Yanni. Let's uh, talk about your high school career at Hilton under Coach Gross, right, I think? Uh, yeah. Uh, Four-time state champ. You went 243-3, and three, and I mean – just an absolute dominant force at the high school level. And I think uh, uh, me and Tony uh, met you like when uh, you were in sixth grade, maybe uh, sixth or seventh. And, you know, I, uh, I uh, told my parents and, uh, and my coaches, hey, man, this, this kid is the uh, real deal. Just so flexible, so fast, so, uh, so just an awesome scrambler. And, you know, I knew uh, being a sophomore in, like, high school, hey, this this a kid's solid. So, yeah, let's uh, talk about, like, uh, like your uh, state finals matches or, you know, that 210-match win streak. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a big um, contributing factor to my success was that we didn't really – I mean, not that those high school results aren't great, you know, but I think we looked past them in the sense that I was holding myself to – you know, a higher level, you know, a college or a, or a senior level type of standard. And obviously, if we're talking about how good I was, I just wasn't that good compared to that level of wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah. So because of that, we were, there was a lot of room to work on. You know what I mean? If, if I didn't do something exactly how it should be done, we broke it down and worked on it. And, you know, part of that, I think it takes a certain type of mindset where you're, you're constantly critical of yourself. And I had people around me who were constantly critical of me. You know, I mean, I didn't get a lot of praise from my parents. You know, I mean, they weren't like, oh, you're doing great. It was like, you need to work on this. You need to do this. You know, you should be doing this. And, like, it wasn't annoying to me because, you know, you don't need to positively reinforce people who are doing great. You know, I mean, it's like I didn't, I didn't need my parents to build me up. I was having all these great results. So we could just kind of look up past that and just sit down and talk about it. You know, I mean, if I was, if I was getting my head kicked in every weekend – then yeah, I probably wouldn't need to get built up, to get built up a little bit, you know. But they recognized what I needed, and that I needed the criticism. And I think that that was probably the greatest um, thing that led to my success was that you know I was constantly looking to change and improve. You know, what I mean, I think that I'm not saying that no one, not that everyone doesn't do that, but I think that sometimes people will let moments of success kind of let let them get lazy or maybe scare them off a little bit. Yeah, I did my best to not have that happen. Yeah, who was your uh, toughest match in high school? I mean, I wrestled – me and Vito Arusha had a really crazy state finals match, and obviously Vito ended up – you know, he's so good. And that was back when we were in eighth grade. I think we've wrestled like six times maybe, me and Vito. Really? I did not know that. Yeah, we wrestled a lot. But, I mean, it was mostly when we were younger. You know? Yeah. And my sophomore year at Eastern States, I wrestled Jack Mueller – Yep. He was really good. I think we both were like top five in the country when the match happened. I was in that bracket. <laughs> huh? You were the did you wrestle? Oh, yeah, I was in the bracket. I got fourth. I lost to Oberheiser for third and fourth, actually. Did you wrestle Mueller or no? No, I lost to I quarters. I lost to a kid from Virginia in like the quarter. You or Jimmy, huh? I don't know. I didn't I don't talk to guys on Uh <laughs> Jimmy is actually coaching at a, a school now in Georgia. What? Right. Yeah. 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 He has a ton of shoulder surgeries and knee surgeries. He's really beat up. So I think he has eligibility left, but he's just going to be like a player coach kind of. Yeah. Know, like focused on school. He was in the architecture school, which is really tough at Cornell. Yeah. So, but that uh, uh, bracket at uh, Eastern States was a wicked tough. Had, like, us three, we all won states. And then Mueller was like, he, he won preps a bunch of times. He was the top five guy in the country. Yeah. 
That was a good week. He actually had the one seed, didn't he? And you had or no, right? I think he. I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I don't know. I just yeah. Tell I me. could have seen it. Who me. Was I that, had to. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, who was that tough kid from uh, uh, Johnny? Uh, what's his name? School Grushheimer. Uh, on top. Um, oh Wanta? yeah. He was a short little yes, like a short stocky little kid. kid. I don't remember. I think bracket, he was a state yeah. champ or state finalist. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, he was, that, was, that was a tough. He, yeah, he was a pretty I tough. Don't remember so, him, yeah. uh, Yanni, you uh, got hurt. Uh, was it your sophomore year or your junior year? Right. My senior year. Oh, was it? Yeah. All the surgery. Right? Really? Yeah, which sucks because I, I uh, probably bet five uh, state titles for you, but hey. So now let's talk about you choosing uh, Cornell. Uh, why choose there? Why go there? Uh, tell us about Coach Cole and the uh, program and uh, why it's such a awesome uh, wrestling program and I think ranked fourth in the preseason polls. The dual rankings, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I like that at Cornell if, I, if the wrestling never worked out, I had, I had options. You know what I mean? I think sometimes – and it's not their fault, but guys might choose a, a a lesser education to go to a good wrestling school. And then if it doesn't work out and you're not, you know, phenomenal, or like you just don't want to be involved in wrestling anymore, you might have a lesser degree than you could have. And I'm not saying, I mean, these are tiny little differences, but it just depends on what you want in life. You know what I mean? And I, I knew I wanted to be involved in wrestling and I wanted to, you know, do great things and get into coaching, but you never know. Like I couldn't, I could have got, I don't know. I could have got knock on wood. I could have gotten a car accident, never wrestled again. And now it's like, well, what am I going to do? At least I was at Cornell. You know what I mean? And I had a good relationship with the coaches. I, I would go up to the RTC a lot when I was younger in high school and I really liked them. And I liked, I just liked working with them. And, you know, I, I noticed a lot of times when you go to the bigger programs, schools kind of have a style that they like to get you wrestling towards. And I liked the individuality, the individuality that the guys in Cornell had, you know what I mean? You could, if you look at a guy like me, Max Dean and Ben Darmstadt, you know, those are three completely different styles of wrestling that all work at Cornell because the coaches are kind of willing to cater to how you wrestle and then build that style, you know what I mean? Which I appreciate. So, yeah, uh, tell us about the coaches and, and you know, uh, how they have uh, personally uh, affected you, uh, Coach Gray and uh, Coach Cole. Yeah, I mean – you know, Coach Cole, I remember a lot, you know, my freshman and sophomore year, I would talk to him about just kind of like the, the ins and outs of coaching. You know, I was starting to try to learn about it, and he's done so well. You know, I mean, he built Cornell up from a really, really below average wrestling team to consistently one of the best teams in the country. And just kind of stuff like, oh, you know, what classes should I take? What kind of skills should I work on developing? And he would, you know, kind of like, oh, you should take some marketing, some communication, right? And stuff like that kind of guiding me along the way that I, I really appreciate. And, you know, Mike is, Mike has kind of taken me into his family. You know what I mean? I, I, I just, I don't know. They kind of treat me like I'm, you know, family to them, which I really appreciate. And I think that that's the part of the reason that, you know, I do so well with him and I respond so well to him is because, you know, we do have a really good bond outside of the room. And I think that that's something that's really big. You know, if you look at guys who are really successful that are, tight with their coaches I feel like that's a big um yeah. different you know what I mean so I'm, I'm really thankful for that yeah and honestly I I always uh see uh you know like your pictures and your tweets like uh hanging out with uh with uh yeah, his baby and yeah. his wife so yeah that's a uh, pretty cool to see yeah. how many kids so he's got one right now and they have a, a they have a son and then they have a daughter on the way so. now uh he was at 33 for Cornell, right? Yeah, he was a 33-pounder. Um, he was two-time All-American, two-time blood round. Yeah. Yeah, he was good. He was really good in high school, and I think he had a lot of injuries in college. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was a little beat up towards the end of the year, but, you know, I it's cool to see how he's kind of changed, too. I feel like, you know, he was really caught up. He kind of was the kind of guy who would just wrestle really hard and, you know, bang, 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 lots of single legs and just wrestled really hard. And, you know, I think when I got there, I was a little different. Not that I didn't wrestle hard, but I was more focused on kind of hitting these a variety of techniques. And, you know, I probably was a little soft for what I needed to be, you know what I mean, physically soft. And we kind of rubbed off on each other where now he's really interested and he watches a lot of foreign wrestling. And he, he 
he's wrestling through a much more skill-based lens than I think he might have used to. And on my end, I've gotten a lot tougher and I probably look at it through more of a grit, a gritty lens than I would have. And we're, you know, we're both probably somewhere in the middle, mm -hmm. but you know, it's good that we've kind of exposed each other to the other side. You know what I mean? Okay. So oh, I have a question. Yeah. You're so the transition from high school to college, a lot of people struggle with that first year. You came in and, you know, won a title, had a lot of success. What, like, how, what would you tell other kids coming in, like, what to do or? So this is one thing I remember my dad said to me that really stuck with me. And it was like, just because you're doing extra, it doesn't mean anything. So here's what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't do extra, but hmm. if, you know, you, you might go into practice, you know, you wrestle six days a week and you do two individuals with your coaches and you're like, well, everyone does one, I'm doing two. My dad was like, I remember telling my dad that and he was like, so what? Like, are you getting any better? Like, what do you think? You know what I mean? And I was like, well, you know, I probably need to spend more time working on this. And he was like, well, then do it. You know what I mean? And I think that sometimes people will fall in love with the idea that, oh, well, college training is really hard. Like, I don't need to do more. You know, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm tired. That's not the case. If you look at, at least on my end, I can see it. You know what I mean? The guys who have the most success on our team are just doing more. And that's not to say that they're running more sprints necessarily. Sometimes it is that. But on the other side, you know what I mean? It's, you know, there's some days where I might spend 40 minutes after practice working on one position with my coach. And I think that younger guys sometimes are afraid to ask. They're afraid to put themselves out there and be like, hey, like, can I work on you with this? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and they got to understand like that's your coach's job you know what i mean they want you to be great they want you to be great for your best interest and their best interest you know what i mean they want to have a good team and they want to see you do well so i think you know if i was talking to young guys i would tell them you can't be afraid to you know do more than what you think you should do you know don't be afraid to spend an hour after a workout working on one position don't be afraid to watch the film or you know come in early before practice and talk stuff out even if you think you're doing a lot, there's more, even if it's not physically that you could be doing, you know? That was an awesome answer. Uh, that was a pretty good, a uh, pretty uh, thorough. I was a yeah. fan of that answer. Yeah, that a was a pretty awesome. So, uh, Yanni, is there maybe a, uh, a future in coaching for you? Yeah, I would love, love to be involved in coaching. I mean, definitely Division One if I could, you know, maybe some freestyle stuff. I mean, that would be great too. You know, I just think kind of see where it takes me, you know, obviously you never, as coaching is one of those fields where you never really know where you're going to end up until you end up there. Just because yeah. you, you don't know what's going to become available to you and you don't know, you know, who's going to move and who's going to stay where they are. So it's definitely one of those things that I, I just don't know what it's going to look like. You know, I mean, the, the field of college wrestling could be completely changed, you know, five years from now so who even knows but i would love to be involved in coaching and yeah also division one program you know whether i'm kind of joining along on a really good one or trying to build one up i think either way it would be really great yeah i uh, think so too i can uh, see you uh, being a future coach so uh okay let's uh talk about your uh national finals matches two absolute barn burners with uh meredith and joey let's uh talk about the uh, match with a uh uh, you know, you're our first uh, national title. Uh, tell us, like, you know, you're, like, feelings, uh, nervous, scared, stressed, or, like, what? Yeah, I mean, you know, I had the whole ACL thing, and I didn't know about it, but it wasn't like it added stress, but if anything, it took the stress away because I was like, all right, well, <laughs> like, I feel like all of my energy was focused towards just, like, being ready. Like, you know, I mean, I, I remember the day of the finals, like, I had to get my – my guy who I was rooming with, Chaz Tucker, a 32 pounder, had to like help me get out of bed. <laughs> and wow. like, I don't know. I just remember. So it was hard to be nervous because it's like, you know, one minute you're weighing in, you go home, you ice your knee a bunch, tape your knee, eat breakfast. All right, come back, work out. You know I mean? Ice your knee more. It was like, there was constantly things that were occupying me. So I didn't even have time to really stress about it because I had this like big issue that I had to take care of. And obviously I didn't know the extent of what I was doing you know I didn't know that my ACL was torn but it was still just stuff occupying my mind and you know kind of keeping me distracted from how big of a deal it was and I think on the flip side you know, I was excited it was like you wrestled the whole season because you want to wrestle the NCAA finals you know what I mean yeah 
I think, you know, for me, the buildup was, it was, I mean, obviously everyone's going to be nervous, but I was really excited for it. You know I mean? I think it was, it wasn't like I was anxious, but I was just glad that this day was here and, you know, that I didn't, I didn't slip up along the way. You know what I mean? And I was just excited for it. Yeah. You had a tough road to the finals, right? You had, I was just going to say that Dean Heil and mm-hmm. I forget who else, but. Had Heil in the quarters. He was, he was a defending two-time champion. Yeah. And then I had Iron in the semis. He ended up taking fourth. He was the only guy who had beaten me that year. Mm-hmm. He beat me in Florida in December at, at like a South Beach duels. And then I had Meredith in the finals, who I had actually beaten earlier in the year, but he was the one seed because, honestly, I don't know. They had whatever, however the, <laughs> however the points came out. He was the one seed, you know? Is that when you hurt your AC, Al? Was that against Heil? Or? Yeah, against Heil. Literally, like right in the first minute. He takes a, a high cross and we get in this scramble and he, I, he ends up on my ankle and I'm trying to like slip my knee out. And I, um, if you can imagine in like a shin wizard kind of position, I go to turn this angle to kind of like slide my leg out and he just did a good job holding on to it. And I pretty much like tore my own ACL, honestly. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it didn't hurt that bad or anything, but it was definitely a little wobbly. You know I mean? I remember getting up and <laughs> wobbly. Up, up and out from under me and I was like, ooh. <laughs> 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 And um, I don't know. I feel like part of it, too, is there's so much adrenaline going that maybe it would have hurt, you know, if I was just, like, running around in my backyard and, like, slipped and tore my ACL. But I feel like just with all the emotion and the the uh, adrenaline buildup, that I honestly didn't really feel anything. So that helped a lot. And then kind of moving forward, it was just, like, managing to deal with it, take a bunch of Advil, I said, Wow. Yeah, and I mean that uh, freshman year to like beat those three such top-notch guys up uh, uh, with a torn ACL. Yeah. Your freshman year is like just mind-blowing, and man, it was awesome. And like that, uh, that cradle in the uh, national finals, I was uh, watching it at uh, uh, home with Tony, and man, that uh, cradle got locked up. And dude, honestly, I was uh, going crazy. Like, oh man, he's got him. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, that match was crazy. You know, I mean, there were a lot of things that happened that didn't happen in Vegas. You know, I mean, I remember in Vegas, I took bottom in the second period. He rode me for two minutes. Oh, really? So down. Yeah, I remember watching that match, too. All right, we <laughs> got to figure this out. <laughs> I ended up getting out, and then he actually didn't get to my – maybe he got on there one time. But I remember, you know, watching his match, actually his semis match, he wrestled McKenna, Joey McKenna, mm-hmm. and – uh with like 20 seconds to go, he takes a high crotch. Joey's in crackdown, and like they're both just kind of sitting there. And I can tell Joey's like trying to work towards uh, scooting behind, getting a takedown, but he just wasn't um, as familiar with the position, you know, as Meredith was in crackdown. But I noticed that Meredith was just kind of like hanging out in there, who would just like sit on the leg and let the match end that way. And I mean, I'm not gonna say sit here and tell you I predicted that I was gonna create one, but I was like, all right, that's a position I can take advantage of. You know, I mean, he could try to just like, hang at the end of the match. And we were in the exact same position. And, you know, kind of, I'm not gonna say he just sat hung on, but like he just kind of took a shot and was chilling on my leg for a minute. And then yeah. I slept. I slept that cradle. Yeah. So it was kind of foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, that is probably in my top five favorite uh, national finals matches. Thank like you. with uh, maybe a uh, uh, nickel uh, pinning Martin in the first period. That's probably in my top five too. But uh, yeah, that that uh, match was great. So now uh, going into your sophomore year, uh, you know, is like there any extra uh, pressure on you or like stress to uh, come back and uh, uh, win a, another title or what? No, I mean the ACL recovery was tough. You know, I mean I uh, – my timing wasn't great, and I was not, you know, in good shape. I just physically, I wasn't where I needed to be. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't wrestling live until maybe, like, the end of October or the beginning of November. So, I just I missed out on preseason and, you know, all that, that, that good, you know, two-and-a-half-month chunk of training that guys usually mm-hmm. get. So, I was playing catch-up a little bit, you know, kind of trying to keep my weight down, but get in shape and build my build my conditioning back up. So, it was, it was tough, you know, but I, I made it work. You know, I'm not going to say I had a great year. I mean, my results were good. I had great results. So, yeah. But I just, you know, physically, I, I probably wasn't at my best. I wasn't wrestling at my best. And it's kind of just my fault, you know, not being as prepared as I should have been to come off surgery. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it is and, good, but it made it work. You know, at the uh, national tournament, you beat uh, Demas in the quarters, right? Who would you yeah. beat in the semis? I don't remember. Ironman again. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the uh, score – 
was what? It was like six four. Was it? Yeah. Well, yeah. And I think, and well, then yeah, before I took him down. Right? Yeah, and like then probably the best finals match of 2019, the a match with Joey, the uh, takedown that uh you know uh, some weird. fans think is not, but oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah I mean I uh, thought it was because you know I am Team Yanni. <laughs> yeah, I mean to be honest, when you go back and watch it, so in maybe halfway or towards the end of the second period, I hit tip him and go arm bundle, you know where you cross your yep. arms up off his single leg and I actually step over and kind of put him on his back and I stick him there for like a second or two and they didn't call that two and honestly when you watch that that was much more of a takedown than the last the last one like I get why people are upset it's kind of like <laughs> like my leg is in but it's not like in there for very long it's probably in there for three seconds <laughs> and they give it to me and I was like okay but when you watch the hip tip one I literally have his arms crossed and he's on his back bridging yes. for three seconds nope. and he bridges me off and I'm like the ref goes nothing, and I'm thinking he said no back points. Yeah. And I'm like, and I like just go to line up on top, and he's like, oh, we're neutral. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and that last take time was with like what, like five seconds to go or something? Yeah, it was like, like, no time, pretty much. I mean, and they reviewed it afterwards, right? Yeah, I go hip tip and kind of like yeah. plant on his back for a second, and he's like wiggling around down there and comes off, and I, I missed the arm bundle, so I have just the wizard, and I just stepped over and threw a leg yeah. in. And what were your thoughts that, during like the review, like going into overtime? Like you had a lot of time to like think and talk to coaches. Yeah, I mean, I just know, you know, on his end, that's emotionally draining. You know, I mean, to think, to think you just won the match and then, you know, you're it's it feels like it's getting taken away. You know, I mean, you're like, because obviously you don't think you got taken down. If you're if you're throwing the brick, you believe that you didn't get taken down, right? Yeah. And I knew that that's emotionally draining to not get a call go your way. So I am. That's the kind of things you have to take advantage of where then right away you start, you get get in the guy's face, you kind of pressure him. And those are kind of little things that probably, you know, don't always make a difference, but they're the things that in those kind of 50-50 moments make a big difference. You know what I mean? And I try to just um try and create as much stress as possible. You know, and, I, and that's just against anybody. I try to be stressful, you know what I mean? Because I think that's how you wear a guy out and that's how you get them to make mistakes. You know I mean? Yeah. If you let a guy be comfortable and stay in their game plan, that's how they can – it's, they can just wrestle however they want. Then you know, I mean, if I can make you uncomfortable and flustered, that's how the match starts to shift in my favor. Yeah, and uh, uh, Joey beat you right in uh, freestyle, right or no? Yeah, he did. did he? Yeah. So, uh, Yanni, tell us, uh, you know, that uh, next time wrestling uh, uh, Zane and Joey, you know, you know, how do you beat them? Uh, you know, like some changes, and, and you know, don't like uh, uh, tell me secrets, but like uh, maybe a different mindset or technique or something yeah just work on my leg defense you know what i mean those guys are all over my legs and i get like you know it's one of those things like i'm known for scrambling but the best guys are going to be able to finish at the worst they're gonna be able to push me out you know what i mean so spend a lot of time just keeping guys off my legs and you know de developing my pace you know what i mean talk just talking about what i was just saying you know flustering a guy and mm -hmm. trying to make them feel pressure for me physically but also you know, psychologically, where I'm just, I'm in their face, I'm constantly attacking, snapping, clearing, re into them, you know what I mean? Just putting them in positions where they, they feel like they're never comfortable. And I think that that's the best way to kind of approach a match is you want to make them feel as uncomfortable as possible. So that's yeah. kind of what, you know. And, you know, I was just uh, uh, wrestling with you, I think back in April, right? And uh, I uh, uh, didn't realize how uh, uh, strong uh, you really are. Like, dude, you snapped me, and I was like, man, that guy uh, doesn't seem that strong like wrestling. I, I mean, I like mean it. In a no, I, like, I don't look strong. Yeah, but dude, <laughs> you like snapped me, and like uh, 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 Tony uh, said it too, like, man, dude, his like grip and like his like heavy hands is actually pretty gosh darn strong. Yeah, you felt really like just tight. I don't really know what the, I don't know, it just felt, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, a lot of the from wrestling with Kyle, I just – I feel like when you wrestle higher-level guys, you kind of get used to a certain standard. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the most in my wrestling is my hand fighting developed a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, because when you wrestle a lot of bigger guys who are just strong and trying to, like, yank you around, you do have to kind of learn how to hold your body in good position, you know what I mean, and use your hands a lot to snap. And on the flip side, too, I think a lot of times wrestling strength comes from positioning, you know what I mean? So if I can – set my feet my right way and get my hips shifted the right way and then 
get my footwork good, it makes me feel a lot stronger than I am. But in reality, I'm getting you off balance. And once you're off balance, you know, I mean, I can just slap you on the side of the head and kick your foot and you're going to fall over. So I think that that's where, you know, some guys are just straight up strong. Like I just grab you and squeeze you and I'm really strong. Right. But yeah. I think there are other guys and I think I'm probably more of the second kind who are strong because, you know, they, they know how to use bigger muscles versus your smaller muscles or how to put you in a position where you're less balanced. And I think that that's, it's the more, I think it probably the more common form of strength. You know what I mean? Cause when you wrestle, you know, both guys are strong. I mean, obviously one guy will be stronger, but they're both strong. And when, when someone feels overwhelmingly strong like that, a lot of times it's because they understand the position well. Yeah. Uh, did so, you work on your, like, flexibility? Because you are pretty known for being as flexible, you know. Yeah, I mean. So did you I work on that back in, like, high school? Yeah, a, a ton when I was younger. I don't have to do it as much now because I think to an extent it's kind of stuck with me. But a, a, so much when I was younger. You know, I mean, I, I stressed a lot, you know, before and after practice and when I was a little kid a lot. And um, it's one of the things I think it's overlooked, you know, people talk about being strong, fast, in good shape, you know, explosive, but flexibility is equally as valuable in the sense that, you know, if you look at like the really good Russian guys or even good Americans, they're really flexible. You know I mean? Like you see Burroughs and Kyle doing splits and throwing their leg past their head to catch a guy's leg or, you, know, you see a Russian guy who can limp out of an underhook and he throws his elbow to the other side of his head to give himself room to come out. And those are the kind of things that, you know, might get overlooked by, you know, the average high school wrestler that are, are equally as important, you know what I mean, when used the right way. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, the, like, two most uh, flexible people I have ever seen wrestle is uh, you and that uh, – is it uh, the old uh, one – 25 pounder for a Penn State. I am. A, I literally was thinking it. Donald Blank or Nico? Nico. Yes, Ooh. Nico. God, I that literally, a, that was the name that popped into my head. Yes. You... Because, dude, his uh, his uh, splits yeah, his like split happened insane. every single match. Like you just a crazy up. split. You can pull them up like in no other person. Ever. I like when you watch him wrestle, he can put himself in the craziest positions. Yeah. Insane. Yeah, man. Uh, he was so flexible. He uh, won at his senior year, right? Yeah, he – yeah, and he took a bunch of, like, seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it Delgado or no? I don't remember. Was it Jesse? Gilman. He Gilman. Yes. Oh, Gilman, Gilman yeah. He lost, uh, he lost to Nation in the semis. He lost to McDonough at one time. Then he lost to Delgado in the finals. Then he beat Gilman. And yeah. just a tough guy just battling every year. I was working with Nation because I see a couple of videos of you and him kind of sparring. Yeah, he's – Talk about strong guys who are just straight up strong. He is strong, man. Is he it? can like use your hand and just hold it to no end. And <laughs> he's got that that really good pop, you know, when he shoots. And I mean, I didn't have to tell you that. See that. But I mean, he was good. He was, he provided the field because I think sometimes I am able to beat guys because I have good footwork or you know I'm quick to legs. And I think that he has better footwork and is quicker. You know what I mean? So it was a different type of way to challenge me. Mm -hmm. You know, I and. Any time we feel like that is valuable. You know, I mean, any time a guy can do something that a different person in the room can't do, I'm, you know, I'm going to take that on. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, honestly, if I made a, like, uh, top ten list of, like, my uh, a favorite uh, college wrestlers ever, uh, Garrett and you would uh, probably make, like, you know, like that list because I just love uh, watching uh, Garrett Russell. Yeah, Nation was going to yeah, he got in so deep on Jesse at national. Jesse Delgado, so many times, and he couldn't finish. Yeah, dude. Turned him oh. upside down and double legged him. Yes, yes. yes. Just got in so deep. I was bummed, but uh, uh, Jesse was obviously tough back in the day. So, yeah, let's uh, talk about, uh, you know, uh, COVID hitting in March and the uh, team being bummed and, well, obviously – uh, you know, what did like uh, Coach Cole or Coach Gray say to the team? And, you know, how did the team take it? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think in general, everyone felt, you know, the, the worst for the seniors. You know, I mean, we had some guys, you know, Chaz was trying to all American for the first time, and we, we knew he was going to do well. We all thought he was deep to win. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had like Noah Bobman who got kind of screwed out of making it to the tournament a couple times, and he finally got there. And, 
you know, just two really sad ones. And then we, Brandon Womack, you know, I mean, it was his senior year. And, yeah. I, you know, I feel for those guys. You know, I mean, they, they train hard all year and you know, they're doing the right thing, especially as seniors. It's like, you know, sometimes it's like your whole wrestling career is culminating to this NCAA tournament. And it didn't happen. And, you know, it's no one's fault. It's just kind of what happened. You know, so you feel, you feel bad for those guys. And, you know, it's not a time that needs to be said. You know, I mean, it's just kind of is what it is. I'm like, yeah. But, you know, uh, uh, once that uh, news kind of broke, I mean, it was just heartbreaking for like rest, like just so many wrestlers, like uh, seniors especially, like because I think of uh, uh, Pat Lugo at 49, uh, uh, who was the top seed at, and a senior. And you know, I I uh, uh, know Pat personally, and uh, it was uh, just kind of a sad time. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's kind of it's it's just a tough thing because it's it's something that we've never seen before you know i mean no one who's alive today was alive during the global pandemic ever and you know on the flip side it's like you don't even know what to do you know i mean you've never been in this kind of situation so i mean it was tough for everybody you just feel for the guys who you know, missed out on it. yeah well all right let's uh change moods yanni let's uh have some fun it's a speed round time i'm gonna ask you random fun questions and if Tyler and Tony has some questions too, just throw them at them. First one, your favorite wrestler of all time, and you can't say Dake. Yeah, who I saw Shatia. Who? Shatia, because he's this oh, Russian yeah. guy. Good yeah. pick. Yeah, um, why? He could score from anywhere, and I remember watching him wrestle, and he could just, he did these things that, I mean, he wrestled almost 40 years ago now. And he still does things that if I put the video on for like you guys, you'd be like, what, what is he doing? It's like stuff that no one did and no one does anymore. You know what I mean? And he kind of, he was revolutionary in the sense that he introduced a lot of these really weird positions that are now super yeah. normal. And I think at least he was the first guy to get really good in there. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he's arguably the best wrestler ever. So I, I mean, he's just, he's just super impressive. All right, next. Your favorite movie? Oh, it like depends on the mood. I don't know. I'm a big comedy guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I really like Dodgeball. Like, Step Brothers. <laughs> like, Blades of Glory is fantastic. Blades of Glory might be my favorite. Will Ferrell. Yeah, God, that is such a funny movie. <laughs> oh, man, it's so cool. With cool. the uh, uh, Iron Lotus. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, like such a quotable movie, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Your uh, favorite genre of music and artist? Um, you know, I, I think I like rap and alternative. I've really I've been listening to a lot of alternative recently and classic rock too. Recently, a lot of classic rock. I don't know where it came from because it's not like I. Your dad probably because yeah. I was always yeah. uh, talking to him like about the uh, '80s bands and stuff. Yeah, like I've been listening to a lot of Leonard Skinner and like Queen and stuff recently. So that's probably what I've been big on right now. Yeah, that's uh, you, uh, some of the best music for sure. Yeah. Your favorite wrestling move in folk style and freestyle? I just single like. Yeah, just a single? It's the highest percentage and it works super well. It's definitely yeah. more, but it works. Tony has a question for you. I, uh, saw his... I was just going to say favorite finish to a single leg because there's I so many. I do this little thing where I go back door and kind of lock my hands and like throw the guy through. And yeah, yeah. it's definitely not traditional, but I think it's super foreign for other guys. So I, yeah. I, I like that a lot. Yanni, I show that every year of uh, just, you know, to my team. Like I show that finish every year and the kids love it, dude. It yeah. works really yeah. well. It's like a weird feel to pick up, but it works. Yes. Yes, it does. And, and you know, uh, sometimes – you know the uh uh kid panics yeah like, you know, and like let go of yes. everything you just yes yeah and i just i uh i actually uh do that move uh quite a bit in the practice room uh wrestling my uh student athletes um your favorite athlete of, of all time outside of wrestling outside of wrestling i love to be does that count i feel like it's killer yes it's that <laughs> counts because i also love him i love to be he's my favorite Favorite MMA fighter ever, probably. He's awesome. He just, uh, I don't know, I appreciate his kind of like, for lack of a better word, nobility in fighting. Like, you know, I mean, he doesn't, 
he doesn't talk that much trash unless you started with him and he's not really in it. You can tell he's not really in it for the money. He just does it because he wants to be a great fighter and I, I respect that, you know what I mean? I think, you know, a lot of guys in the UFC and it's not their fault. It's just like, that's your livelihood. Do it for the money and I respect that he does it kind of because he wants to fight other people. <laughs> yeah. And I also think like, you know, that's his uh, foreign mindset and it's a bit, it's a bit different yeah. from like people here in like this country. Yeah, I feel like yeah. domestically, you know, in America, people are just more driven by money than they yeah. would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, he's from Dagestan. Is that the yeah. country? Yeah. yeah. So it's 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 in Russia, but that's like the wrestling. It's actually it's like the best wrestling region in the world is Dagestan. Yeah, I was watching a like video of the coach uh, uh, showing like his uh, his like dorms for the kids and the uh, wrestling mats, and it literally looks like a like a bad high school. Yeah, like, so so like all right, and you know what I mean, and none of them are stuck up about it. They're just like, all right, we train here, we'll train yeah. here, whatever, and that's just yeah. And I mean, uh, each wrestler that comes from there is obviously as tough as nails, and yeah, it's just it's a tough place to be. Yeah, a lot of Americans are prima donnas. They need that. Yeah, I feel like generally people like the. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I can't really say that. But, yeah. <laughs> Y'all got like any uh, good questions for me? I got one. What is your go-to post weigh-in meal or snack? So I got my whole little, I drink a Gatorade and some water, obviously, and then I have some fruit, some Cheez-It crackers, and a sandwich. And that's like all I need. That's all I need. Like every time I grocery shop, I get, you know, whatever fruit, like strawberry, blackberry, raspberry, whatever. Gatorade, water, fish, or uh, Cheez-It, and like a turkey sandwich. And it's super weird, but it's just what makes me feel good. You know, I mean, you get like the sugar, the salt, the water. You know, yeah. so you get everything you need, and I just really like it. I don't know, and it's, it's satisfying. I the sandwich one used. I used to not do that, and I realized part of it is like when you're cutting weight, you just don't eat a lot. You need just to have some food in your belly just to keep you going. A little bit. Yeah. Tom, How was the cutting weight, or like what would you do to cut weight, or was it hard to cut weight? My sophomore year, I had a hard time, and honestly, I think it was just mostly because of the ACL thing. I mean, I just wasn't really in the right kind of shape to start wrestling, cutting weight, and I just kind of was doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just try to really, you know, make sure my weight stays in check. I don't like to get super heavy. You know, I mean, some guys are cool with being, you know, 12 or 15 over, and don't get me wrong, like, we've all been there. But I try to stay, you know, single digits, maybe 10 or 12 over tops, so – just because, I don't know, everything's a morning weigh-in. So if it was a night before weigh-in, yeah, go ahead, get giant. doesn't matter. But it's just different now. You know, I mean, you got to be able to wrestle close to weight. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Are you planning on going uh, 41 this year or 49? I don't even know if we're going to have a team. I'm not supposed to say anything yet. So yeah, I true. <laughs> See, I, was, I was actually thinking that, too. <laughs> I mean, How's I'm the not... Cornell team looking this year if we have a season? We're going to have a good team. I mean, got some guys coming off red shirt, you know, I mean, I think that we have some really good young guys coming in and it's going to work well together. You know I mean? I think it's kind of up to guys like me, Vito, Max, and Darmstadt to kind of help these younger guys along the way. And at the same time, you know, we got to do our job and keep getting better and make sure that, you know, we are doing everything we can. But I think we're going to have a really good team. Yeah. So, Yanni, you know, you know, really, what are your uh... – uh, future goals, uh, like in folk style and freestyle, like, you know, uh, what do you uh, want to and plan to uh, accomplish in the future, like of wrestling? I mean, obviously the big one is, you know, you want to win the world. And one thing that I definitely have, you know, became more of a believer in recently is I, I really try to focus on, you know, Obviously, I want to do great, and I want to win the, you know, all these things. I want to win NCAAs, win world championships, win Olympic games. But mm-hmm. I try my best to stay focused on just like the pure development. You know, I mean, I, I just want to be a great wrestler, and those results will just kind of come along the way as I keep getting better. And um, it's obviously, easier said than done. It's easy to get caught up in everything when you're so close to it. But that's definitely a big psychological change that I've developed in the last couple of years. Just really focusing on being. Great at, great at wrestling and just letting the results come as they come. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So maybe a uh, uh, gold medalist, you know, in the future. I would put money on it, so. Preferred style of wrestling, freestyle or folk style? 
freestyle by a million. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, should, should college switch to freestyle or stay folk style? In a perfect world, college wrestling would be freestyle because we would yeah. just be better at wrestling. Mm -hmm. But I think folk style is so deeply rooted and people are kind of like there's a lot of people there's for every freestyle guy there's a folk style guy who thinks that freestyle is super dumb and yeah. you know i mean i i'm i'd be the first person to tell you like i don't think folk style is good like i don't, I just don't <laughs> like it. but you know i just think that if there's such a large folk style crowd and so deeply rooted in our, our culture mm -hmm. that it'll never go away but i would love to see an nca freestyle yeah definitely That'd be awesome mm -hmm. yeah same with me so uh yanni it is uh uh, closing in on the end of the episode and like something uh, me and Tyler uh, like to do with our guests is like end with a in inspiring message since you know our country is like kind of down right now our uh, uh, country is like just uh, kind of down in the dumps and like you know not acting right and there's a lot of uh, racism and uh, criticism and like just uh, so many things going on COVID as well so you know just uh, give the fans a good final message our viewers, our fans, some some friends as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like one thing that helps me a lot, you know, when things are tough is that you don't ever want to be the person who feels sorry for yourself. You, know? you don't ever want to think, you know, oh, it sucks that you did, it sucks that you did. Because, you know, your life could always be harder. You know, I mean, if you live in the United States, there's a 95% chance you have a pretty good life compared to what it could be. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so I get that, you know, things are tough. You might not be able to see your friends or, you know, people in your family or, you know, you, you, might, be, you might be sick. There might be things that don't go your way that should be. And you know, I understand that, you know, it's something that not everyone can relate to, but you got to just kind of keep chugging along and don't let, don't let life knock you down just because it's hard. You know what I mean, if you stay the course and stay focused, it will work out in your favor. You know what I mean? I think that, you know, like karma favors the devil. You know what I mean? Can't, can't be easily straight. Yeah, honestly, that was a pretty solid point of like uh, maybe people not realizing uh, how well they have it here in the uh, U.S. Yeah, it's like life is terrible now, but like <laughs> there's people who just like sit on the side of the road and starve till they die. It, you know yeah. I mean? like, and they for not one moment are thinking like, oh, my life sucks because they're just trying to get by, you know what I mean? And like who are we to just sit here and be like, oh, our lives are so hard. Well, I sit on my phone and watch my TV. And my phone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, what are you doing? Like, so, uh, Tyler and Tony, uh, any last questions or topics y'all want to chat with them about? I had one last question. So, what made, you know, your the garage, as, like, you guys called it, your home wrestling room so tough and, like, development of, like, the Dupre brothers – I think Austin Hurdle was there. I forget who else. I mean, like, I know Vito. I forget. Epis, I think, was there a couple times. I don't remember, but. I mean, I think, you know, it was a combination of my dad was really good about the technique, and he was not afraid to throw stuff away. So we could work on something for a month, and he'd be like, you know what? We're going to do this instead. This is better. And I think that some coaches don't really like to change what they have because it worked for them or it worked for someone they coached. You know what I mean? So I think that was a big difference maker. And. My dad was not afraid to get tough on us. I mean, he did a lot of psychological, you know, playing with your head, playing mind games kind of thing. Oh, so. Sorry. Here's a good example. I'm not going to name names. So this is – I was actually in college for this, but this is the kind of thing that happened to me once a week maybe. Okay. So my dad has me do this bear crawl workout. My garage is 35 feet long. They do bear crawls up and down, and it'll be like five times in a minute. So you got bear crawl up and down five times in a minute. Then I'll be like, all right, four times in – 50 seconds or whatever. And he'll be like, all right, today you guys have 50 bear crawls. But he'll break it up into these like four and five long things. And he'll catch someone lying about how many they did. He'll be like, hey, did you lie? They're like, coach, I didn't lie. Said, if you tell me you lied, I'm just going to restart you guys. Mm. Said, coach, I didn't lie. And he'll restart. And then sometimes he might be like, oh, you cheated. We're restarting. But no one cheated. Mm. Uh -huh. You know, and, and then – you know, we might do stuff like I remember we'll, sometimes we would wrestle live and he would have this big, I mean, it wasn't big, but it was this big of a clock up. But he was like, if I see anyone look at the clock, I'm just going to reset the time. <laughs> but it was a, it was a five minute. Go it's like, you have no idea how long you're going. Right. And that can <laughs> kind of mess with your head. Cause you're like, Oh, well, am I going to be done anytime soon? Like, and if you look <laughs> just to see how long you've been going, well, you go back to zero. So it's almost like the <laughs> time doesn't matter. 
know what I mean? It could be five minutes or 55 minutes. It doesn't matter. You're just going to wrestle until he says stop. Yeah. Those are the kind of things where, you know, when you're a little kid, you're like, oh, my dad's just being mean. Like, but I get it now. It's like the point is don't worry about the time. Don't cheat. Just like little things like that. And I think that, you know, they add up. I think that generally that made us tough. And, you know, when you combine that with the level of understanding of wrestling that my dad had developed by the time, you know, we were 12 and 13 and then kind of we started to understand wrestling at that level, it just is a good combination to have guys be successful. Yeah. 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 Um, honestly, each time I talk to you, I like always learn so much. And honestly, this podcast wasn't any different. I have, I have learned and I've, uh, uh, took it in, uh, so much stuff like a sponge. And I, uh, thank you for coming on, Jan. Any, uh, uh final words uh, for the viewers? Yeah. Just, you know, thanks for having me on. And I don't know, I get stuff sucks right now. We just, just keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Yanni, I'll, uh, post this and uh, tag you like on Twitter and Facebook, please share, it, uh, you know, uh, uh, just uh, share it and like uh, tag us in it and say, hey, like, hey, thanks, Sam, for having me on or something. Because like uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, me and Tyler can have on Gabe Dean or uh, Garrett or maybe uh, Coach Gray or hopefully Kyle Day in the future. Yeah, I'm sure you can get one of those guys on for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks, Yanni, for coming on. And, you know, keep liking, keep subscribing uh, to the Right Here podcast. And uh, uh, thanks, Tony, for uh, uh, coming on and hosting with us. I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That concludes the episode.